You know, usually when I think of tech cards, they go away after a format or two. I used to think cards like Skill Prisoner and Rebound had the potential to be broken tech trap cards, but eventually I figured out they're not that good, and I don't really go back to them anymore. Sure, I still have a couple copies, just on the off chance they ever become broken, but I mostly know they're not going to get that far in competitive play, and I'm okay with that. However, there is one card that I actually talked about two years ago, and this would be the fourth year in a row that I've considered it as a strong tech option for the WCQ, and I don't know why this keeps happening. It's a card that I don't really think of all year, and then every single year for the past four WCQs, when WCQ season comes around, I'm just like, well, wait a second, this card's broken. Should I side deck it? Should I main deck it? And I feel like if I was playing a trap-based strategy for this year's North American World Championship qualifier, like Altergeist or Guru Control, this would be a card I would heavily, heavily consider. However, I'm not playing a trap based deck, so this isn't a card that I'm really thinking about, but it would have been. It would have been the fourth year in a row where I thought of Magic Deflector. In today's video, I want to talk about the different formats of the past four years of the North American World Championship qualifiers, and I want to do this to talk about why I kept thinking that Magic Deflector would be like the end all be all amazing tech option. This card isn't terrible, and it has seen tons of competitive success as a sort of minor tech option in a couple formats, but it's nowhere near as good as I always think it's going to be at the WCQ. Don't get me wrong, this card certainly has a bunch of tops under its belt, but that doesn't mean it's broken and not nearly as good as I think it is when the WCQ season comes around. So what does this card do? Well, it's a normal trap card that says for the rest of this turn, negate all equip, field, continuous, and quick play spell card effects on the field. The only types of spells that this thing does not stop are ritual spells and normal spells. The ritual spell aspect doesn't come up too much, it's probably why I didn't consider this card for the 2015 WCQ, although admittedly, if this card did hit ritual spells, I probably would have played it. That would have been five years in a row. The fact that this doesn't hit normal spells definitely hurts it, and it's probably one of the biggest reasons why this card hasn't been a staple side deck card for the past like five years, but it certainly does have some applications depending on the format. Historically speaking, I really gravitate towards this card in the formats where there's tons of quick play and continuous spells. Of course, this card hits other things, and I think sometimes Sometimes it does hit field spells and that's pretty good, but usually when I'm thinking of this card, it's in formats where a lot of people have a lot of quick play spells and a lot of continuous spells, because what this card does well is it just shuts your opponent out of the game. You can't quite use it like Imperial Order because it's only a one turn stun, which is also one of the biggest problems with it, but you can at the very least make a one for one trade with the card your opponent activates, as well as locking them out of those effects for the rest of the turn. Against decks with lots of these cards that Magic Deflector stops, a lot a lot of times it just skips their turn entirely, and in those ways this card is absolutely fantastic. For example, the very first year that I decided to play this card was 2016. Now at the time I was playing Monarchs, and I felt this card was very effective against many of the top strategies of that time. I mostly like this card in the Monarch Mirror Match. You saw people using cards like Twin Twisters and Domain, and obviously the Monarch Stormforth, and this card stopped all of those and more. If they happen to be playing the extra deck version with Brilliant Fusion, this card hard countered brilliant, and overall I just felt it was a very effective side deck card when you went first in the mirror match. It's worth mentioning I actually didn't end up playing it in my final list for the 2016 WCQ. I did play it in the months prior to that, and I probably should have played it, maybe would have done a little bit better. It wasn't until the next year when I really considered main decking the card because of how powerful it was against the expected metagame. If you remember, I'm sure you do if you played back then, 2017's NA WCQ was all Zodiacs. True Drake was Zodiacs, pure Zodiacs, any Zodiac variant, and this card was extremely effective against many of the cards that people were playing at that event. It hit Tenki, it hit Barrage, it hit Dragonic Diagram, it hit My Body as a Shield, it hit Enemy Controller, so on and so forth. This was a very effective card against many of the most powerful spells in the True Draco and Zodiac decks. Keep in mind, they had no Terra Top at that time, they had no Norden combo, so if you could use Magic Deflector, a lot of the times it just ended their turn. Sure, they would maybe have a normal summon to rely on, but in the deck that I was playing, which was Dinosaurs, I could just flip that monster face down with Ultimate Conductor, and after doing so, I felt like I could just OTK my opponent because the Yangzing Dinosaur True King deck was very, very aggressive. In practice, this worked pretty well. I think that most of the times that I had the Magic Deflector, it mostly won me those games, but the problem with my deck choice was the deck itself. I just didn't play a very good deck. I sort of tried my own thing, it was very teched out, and just didn't work work 
overall. It wasn't really Magic Deflector's fault, and the card individually was very good, but my deck just didn't have enough of a follow-up, or at least not nearly as much of a follow-up as I thought it did when I actually went to that event. And then there's last year, which admittedly, I didn't actually play in the NAWCQ of 2018. I didn't have my invite. It was like the worst season that I ever did competitively. But if you remember, I was playing Altergeist, and one of the techs that I tried out in Altergeist was, you guessed it, Magic Deflector. I played this along things like Artifact Sanctum to try to lock my opponents out of the game. I felt like a lot of the decks at the time were just way too fast for me to actually deal with. In Altergeist specifically, the card was amazing, at least in theory, because it stopped things like Twin Twister from just ruining my entire board. More importantly though, against decks like Trickstar Skyscrapers, you stopped a good half of their deck. You stopped the light stages, you stopped the terraformings by stopping the light stages, and you also stopped the Hornet drones, which is all the engage is really played for. I felt like in that matchup, it was extremely effective, and it was pretty decent. The problem was though, is that it was just a card that if your hand wasn't playable, it didn't really help it in any way. And also like Waking the Dragon, it's a card that if your opponent doesn't actually have a card that you can negate, it's a completely dead trap card. Still, I thought it was pretty good, and I probably would have considered it if I was playing Altergeist again at this year's NAWCQ. I know there's a ton of comments about like, oh, I'm gonna switch back to Altergeist, especially now that I made that Altergeist video yesterday, but I'm really not. I'm pretty much done with that deck until I get some crazy support in the future. I saw the new anime level one monster looks pretty insane, but we'll have to wait and see. But for now, I'm not gonna play Altergeist. I really want you guys to know that. But if I was, I probably would be considering Magic Deflector once again. And I think if you stayed along this far in the video, it's pretty obvious why I'd consider Magic Deflector. Twin Twisters is at an all-time high. It's in almost everyone's side deck. You see a lot of mystical space typhoons even in Causing Cyclones. All these cards that Magic Deflector stops that are really good against Altergeist. Even further than that though, it can stop the Orcus Field spell. That's pretty cool. I mean, not the greatest thing. It can stop set rotation. There's all sorts of cards in the current metagame. Even Hornet Drones is still around after one year. It's only at one copy, but it still comes up. And overall, Magic Deflector is just a card that I always find myself going back to. It's really hard to let this card go because if I forget about this card existing, maybe when a new format comes up where it's really powerful, I won't remember to put it in my side deck. Magic Deflector does have the potential to completely lock your opponent out of the game, especially when I think back to the 2017 format. I feel like that's where this card was at its best. And you can even look at some of the topping lists from that WCQ, and there are people, veteran players like Patrick Hoban, that are side decking multiple copies of Deflector because of how many cards it stops. This card is so good on paper and so good in theory. Sometimes in practice, it's not quite as powerful as I might think it is, but in a lot of cases, you actually can just steal wins by activating this card and locking your opponent out of their turn. However, there is one fundamental issue with Magic Deflector and the decks that I played it in that really made me not realize how good the card was. What I mean by that is that I keep saying over and over again, the card isn't as good as I'm making out to be, but that's actually not true. It's just not very good in the decks that I was trying to play it in because Magic Deflector works best in a consistent strategy because it's basically a blank card when you go first, so you need the other four cards in your hand to be able to combo off and do your normal plays. In that way, I wasn't playing Magic Deflector in the right deck, so it didn't seem nearly as powerful as it probably actually was. And I feel like this is a very important distinction to make, because if you look at like Patrick Hoban's True Draco Zodiac deck that played Magic Deflector in the side deck, it was able to do those consistent openings with the Dryden, with the True Draco cards, and then it could lock their opponent out of the game with that Magic Deflector and then OTK. I thought I could do that with Dinosaurs, but I really couldn't. I thought I could do it with Monarchs, but I wasn't very good with the deck. I thought I could do it with Altergeist, but that deck isn't that aggressive. So overall, when you really think about when Magic Deflector is at its best, it's at its best in consistent, aggressive, and powerful decks, which really weren't the types of decks that I was playing the card in. That being said, don't get me wrong. I think Magic Deflector actually will be competitively viable as a tech option in a side deck in the future. I don't know when that will be. I don't know what metagame it will be in, and I don't know which decks it'll be good against or which cards it'll be good against, but mark my words, Magic Deflector is not completely gone forever. It is a card that if you forget it exists, you won't realize when it's very powerful against the current format, but it'll happen, I guarantee it, because this is a card unlike Skill Prisoner, unlike Rebound, that while it might seem very specific in what it negates, it actually negates a huge margin of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. There are so many cards that this is just instantly amazing against, and I think that all it takes for it to actually be good again is just the right format and the right cards and the right decks to be good against. I know that sounds like something you could say for 
every card, but in the case of Magic Deflector, it really is true. All it's waiting for is a format that's full of field spells and continuous spells and quick play spells, and in those formats, if you can find a deck to play this in, I think you'll absolutely dominate with this very weird off-the-wall tech choice that a lot of people have just completely forgotten exists. Anyway though, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's discussion video on Magic Deflector. I thought it was funny when I went back and looked if I had done a video on this card that it was two years ago, almost to the day, just because, yeah, I always think about this card at the WCQ. It's a really exciting card for me, and it's a really cool tech option I always come back to. I thought it'd be fun to update a video on it and talk about some of the reasons I love the card so much. I'll see you later, though. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.